Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, bald explorer, out on another walk. And this time I'm with Julia. Hello, Julia. Hi. We have uh, come out to uh, just north of Chichester because we are in search of trees. Yay. Now, the last time I went out in search of trees, I went with Julia to look for the fairy tree, yep. which was in Lansing, yep. close to where you live. Yep. But uh, today... Uh, <laughs> We're going to look for a bit more than a fairy tree. Yeah. Where are we going, Julia? We're going to find some very, very old trees, some of possibly, potentially the oldest, or some of the oldest in the UK, definitely in Europe, in fact, I think. That's right. We are at Kingley Vale um, in West Sussex, close to uh, the Hampshire border, but uh, not, and it's... Uh, a natural nature reserve, I think, is it? Natural nature reserve? Something like that. Um, and we've parked up in the car park just up there in a place called West Stoke. Tiny little place. And to get to Kingley Vale, where there's this uh, woodland of oak and ash, but principally, what's of interest to us, yew trees, very ancient yew trees. But there's a 15 minute walk to get there. We can show you a little bit of that walk as we make our way up. Now, have you been here before, Julia? No, I only recently actually learned of it, so I've delighted. Only... Delight, it's exciting, isn't it? Because uh, now you like trees, you're into trees in a big way. What, what do trees mean to you? They mean life to me. They, they, you know, life on Earth exists because of them being here first. They're, they're ancient, they grow to such great ages and they don't often get the opportunity to do so in modern era. They're meaning more to me as I get older, I think, as I'm beginning to recognise the fact that these trees, which are ubiquitous and all around us all the time, we take for granted, actually are vital to our existence. And also they, they play so many parts in our lives, from whether it's firewood, um, whether it's, in this case, some of these used potentially used um, for bow making, back in the Tudor period and even before, maybe in as far back as the Neolithic times. Yep, I was going to say they've sheltered us since since time immemorial, I believe. There's so much we don't understand, don't yet understand about them, or still don't understand about them. So we're going to carry on with our little 15 minute walk until we we get up to the the ewes in particular and, and we'll see what we see. Some of them are uh, le alleged to be over a thousand years old. I know most of them are around about 500. Yeah, most of them are supposedly about 500. Well, they don't know exactly. I mean, they could be up to 2,000 years old, but... Yeah, it's hard. It's very hard to... The nature um, of use is difficult to age because they, they, um, they basically decay from the inside. Um, the, older, the older parts of it from the, the centre, I don't know exactly, but they, it, it, de it decays from the inside outwards. So this is why you often see some of the really ancient ones with the hollowed out yeah, centre. Yeah. Well, I'm very much looking forward to it, uh, Julia. So let's press on and uh, see if we can get there. I heard some shooting going on just now. I hope that's not people shooting at humans. <laughs> Julia. Yep. Let's look through there. Let's have a quick peer through here. What have we got here then, Julia? This looks like our first you. Yes, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Here we go. This is the first of many. We're in a we're in a wood, which uh, that may be ash, I think, behind us. But um, here is our first you of many, presumably, on the path in. There's platforms up there. People have been building platforms. They have. They've been climbing above. And look over here, beyond. Is that a hide? Is that a, a teepee? Or? It's a wooden teepee. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. So this is, uh, this. I mean, this could be built by uh, anybody really, couldn't it? I mean, it's obviously done by the, the pucker guys. <sighs> you can have a, have a little picnic. Again, didn't bring sandwiches. That's the, that's Slapped. the, yes. <laughs> we slapped. But, um, yeah, so is this this isn't a habitat for animals, or is it a shelter for animals? Do you think, or is it just for no, people, or it's just a thing? It's just a commodity. Well, commodity for people, isn't it really? Well, and we're enjoying it. Yeah, certainly. <coughs> but I wouldn't. I would. Uh, I would not be surprised if animals would come through. Yeah, it's a nice little sort of hide you could get in there, especially if it's raining. Although, I dare say that the rain would get in that one. Perhaps when there's more. It's 
leaves on the trees. But this is uh, this is not the main the main part, ladies and gentlemen. Sneak preview. A little sneaky bit. We've uh, we've got up here in front of us to go. Yes, uh, just ahead you can see that hill there in the distance. That is, I believe that's Bow Hill. I don't know whether they're calling it Bow Hill because they used to make bows out of the yew trees. I've never thought of that. Stands to reason. Could be a could be a thing. And on the top, I know that there are fourteen ancient monuments there including an Iron Age hill fort and a Bronze Age burial mound. Wow, it's a nice little bit of carving there Julia. Nice sun rays isn't it? Oh is that what it is? Sun rays, yeah. It says to me, you know. And of course you can peer through the hole in the middle. Uh, if you were tall, are you tall enough? Can you see the camera? There we go. Look, there's a, a board ahead and a little hut with, I think, information in it. Let's go and explore that. And I can see that there is some um, panelling. Do you mind opening the door, Julia? It says here it's um, sponsored by the National Lottery through the Heritage Fund, which is nice to see. So we've got panelling in this hut right at the beginning of the Nature Reserve, the story of Kingley Vale. Um, I won't go through the whole story because we'll be here all day, clearly but uh, it seems to start from the Stone Age, it goes into the Romans and it goes right up to modern day including, oh sorry, <laughs> a Spitfire. I do like Spitfires, a very romantic, um, although it's a machine of war, there's some sort of romance connected with that and myself, I can't explain it. But anyway. There's a um, piece here about the, the ageing of the U. Like oh about right, yeah. So yeah, nobody can d discern how old a yew tree is because the middle of the old trees rot away um, by the chicken of the woods, whatever that is, and other fungi. So there are no growth rings to count in the middle. Which make no sense. growth rings. And of course, the, the rings have been the, the major way that people have, have um, aged trees. Oh. Um, but with the yew, of course, that's incredibly tricky. Yeah, apparently being hollow allows the trunks to flex and bend in the stormy weather. Well, I'm, I am definitely looking forward to seeing those hollowed out yews. Let's not waste any more time in here. Let's go and find some, shall we? Let us. Perfect. Let us. <laughs> Julia, I think we found our first um, largish uh, yew tree here. Yes, she's quite a chunk, isn't she? Look at this. The girth on this thing is pretty big. I'm imagining that there's going to be more that are, are larger. But uh, I mean, just look at the, the the trunk of that. It's. I knew that um, yew trees are fluted if if that's the right word in the way that the that the bark comes down the um not the bark the, the trunk you know the way the shape it of it, the, and... it yeah i mean it's just absolutely amazing piece of knurled old um wood it's, it's just staggering to look at uh and and it's it's like dried lava isn't it as if dried yeah. lava has has come down it's very smooth Absolutely but at right. the same time it's it's ribbed i suppose and then above you've got these amazing trunks um boughs can't get my words out at the moment and then adjacent to it you know we were just talking about um hollowing out trees yeah yeah just here good, good example good example and I'm imagining there'll be more. Really quite. Look at that. Quite savagely. Go on. And yet, you look up there, and it's thriving still. It's a thri It's definitely a thriving tree. Wow! Look at all this down on this side here, where it's sort of almost stringy. Classic what, sorry? It's like classic driftwood. You know? Driftwood, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then over here is a poor old tree that uh, has actually been blown down. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Uh, it's, it's, it's gone timber! And, and there it is, it's just, uh, it's dropped down, quite colossal. Yes, and, and this is something that I've meant to point out in some of my videos, I've noticed um, that some of these, oh there she is. Watch out for that tree! <laughs> <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Bong. Uh, I have seen that film, yes. Um, uh, George, George, George of the Jungle, that's right, I remember that one. 
Um, yeah, no, the moss, the moss and the natural, you know, we're in this na nature reserve. You'll see that these, these mosses have uh, taken root on the bark of the tree. And that's something that you don't see all the time because um, trees in towns and cities are often too polluted. Oh, absolutely. And, and so you don't always see that. And they're often um, um, imported trees as well, like the London Plain. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's only our first part of our adventure here at um, Kingly Vale. It's been very exciting and interesting so far. So thank you, Julia, for this bit. But we're going to do some more, aren't we? Yes. There's more, I think, to see and explore. So join us again in part two, which will be coming up very soon. Thank you very much. Thank Till you. then, goodbye. Bye. Which way now, Julia? This way. This way.